Hello and welcome to The Advocate's Voice. In this bulletin, we are going to inform you about public health policy, law, and consumer advocacy issues relating to safer nicotine products in Asia Pacific. These issues affect everyone, the millions of smokers in the region, policymakers, consumer advocates, and the public. We begin with the Philippines, where foreign interests have pushed hard to influence public health policy and officials there have accepted grants illegally to fund the development of regulation of e-cigarettes and heated tobacco products. The Philippines, a country of 16 million smokers, where the health minister, public health officials, and the president are against smoking of any kind, there is restricted access to safer alternatives such as vapes. Smoking is dangerous, so vaping is also dangerous and I am banning it. And if you're smoking now, you will be arrested. We're just exercising police power of protecting public interest, which is public health. The legal age to buy cigarettes is 18. The legal age to buy vapes is 21. If that wasn't enough of an obstacle to harm reduction, now it has come to light that the FDA of the Philippines has been given money by anti-tobacco and anti-vape foreign interests to influence their regulatory process. During public hearings on regulations for vaping and heated tobacco products in early October, the FDA confirmed that they had received grants from the Union and the Bloomberg Initiative when confronted by legislators. Upon questioning by congressional representatives, it came out that not only had the FDA received this funding, but that they had based guidelines for regulations only on input from known anti-harm reduction groups, which showed partiality to the funding sources. Dr. Lorenzo Mata Jr., president of Quit for Good, stated, this is shameful and scandalous. A Philippine regulatory body receiving money from American businessmen to draft a set of regulations that they cannot even get passed in their own country. There is obviously a conflict of interest here. Peter Paul Detour of the Vapors Philippine commented, all we ask for are transparency and inclusion in the discussion because we, the consumers, are the ones directly affected by these guidelines and not the pharmaceutical or medical groups who have no stake in the issue. President of the Nicotine Consumers Union of the Philippines, Anton Israel, issued an appeal to President Duterte to rescind the foreign grants received by the Philippine Food and Drug Administration, which, he says, cast a dark cloud on the agency's role as an independent regulator and protector of public health. Stakeholders trust the president's uncompromising stand against any form of graft and corruption. From the start, the FDA has shown favor to its foreign benefactors to the detriment of Filipino consumers and interests. The Advocate's Voice spoke with Clarice Virgino, the Philippine representative from CAFRA, for her thoughts. Uh, E-cigarettes and heated tobacco products are not pharmaceutical products and should not be regulated as such. What we need is a uh, fair and risk-proportionate regulation that will um, encourage smokers to reduce their exposure to smoke, which is the one that causes all these diseases. We call for impartial and reasonable regulations based on scientific evidence. These groups, um, the Union and Bloomberg Initiative, are known advocates of um, prohibition for all forms of tobacco products, including alternatives such as e-cigarettes and heated tobacco products. Joey DeLay, president of the Philippine E-Cigarette Industry Association, had asked, what about the one million Filipino vape users who found it hard to quit cigarettes and have switched to what growing evidence says is the better alternative? Does the FDA want them to go back to smoking cigarettes? We are depriving the 17 million Filipino smokers of this opportunity. Dr. Mata, a medical expert on smoking cessation, noted that his organization participated in the public consultation hoping for a robust and substantive discussion on science and not fiction. Furthermore, he said that his organization had been asking the FDA for regulation that was based on the risk profile of the products. The greater the risk to one's health, the stricter the regulation, not the other way around. 
Dr. Mata stressed that science should be the basis of regulation and not political or ideological agendas, noting the abundance of curated and peer-reviewed studies available from other countries. This begs the question, now that we know what has transpired in the Philippines, how many other countries have been influenced by foreign interests in their public health policy process? We now speak with Julie Wesner, the National Policy Director of the Consumer Advocates for Smoke-Free Alternatives Association in the United States. Julie, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Nancy. What do you think about the fact that the union and Bloomberg are using grants and donations to try to influence the legislation in the Philippines? I wish I could say that I was surprised, but the truth is this is how they tend to operate. What is surprising, however, is that the governments are allowing this kind of influence and interference into um, the Philippines. I, I just am rather shocked that they'd allow a U.S. billionaire to influence their policy. Now, obviously, they're trying to influence policy in the Philippines. I would presume that they have done the same in the United States. Do you think that they are also doing this in other countries as well? Oh, there's no doubt. For example, the union has fairly recently called for a ban on low-risk products in developing nations. And this stands in stark contrast to their refusal to call for a ban of cigarettes which we all know are the leading cause of early death and disease in the, in the world, preventable death and disease. It's, it's shocking. Do you have any thoughts as to why they are on this mission? I think for Bloomberg, this is a bit of a personal vendetta um, against cigarette smoking, uh, the tobacco companies, which is understandable. However, when you start expanding this war to include the low risk alternatives that allow people to reduce the damage and disease caused by smoking, they've, they've lost their mission. Um, it's no longer based on science. It's no longer based on genuine public policy uh, concerns. And instead it just becomes a war that has a lot of collateral damage. Thank you for joining us today, Julie. Thank you, Nancy. In Australia, there's been controversy over the Minister of Health's attempt to circumvent due process by pushing through a ban on nicotine for use in e-cigarettes during a parliamentary recess. The fallout from this has been spectacular. A new ban on importing liquid for e-cigarettes will effectively spell the end of vaping in Australia. Uh, but we have uh, some of the strongest laws in the world at present. The government is reportedly cracking down on the illegal importation of vaping products. When will you authorise the vaping product alternative to allow Australians to be able to make that decision to stop killing themselves? What has occurred, I think, is a public health disaster, and uh, that is not something that on my watch I am willing to countenance. Vapors in Australia have been granted a temporary reprieve from Health Minister Greg Hunt's wholesale ban on nicotine for use in e-cigarettes that was due to come into force on the 1st of January 2021. Minister Hunt tried to push the ban on imported nicotine for vaping via an executive order while the Australian Parliament was in recess. As you can imagine, this was not well received in the vaping community, nor amongst many ministers of parliament who were not given the chance to discuss and debate the issue. It's policy by idiocy. Not just idiocy, but ill-informed idiocy. And regrettably, our health minister fails to challenge this idiocy. Instead, he repeats it himself. In October, the Senate resolved to establish a select committee on tobacco harm reduction and put out a call for submissions from the public to get feedback from not only the 500,000 vapors in Australia, but also tobacco harm reduction experts. At this stage, those submissions are being reviewed so that the committee can present their full report to Parliament in the middle of December. Uh, we have now referred to the chief medical and health officers across the country the question of non-nicotine flavoured vaping and e-cigarettes. 
there's a deep concern that these are both an on-ramp for young people to smoking and that they are also potentially dangerous. Concurrent to the Select Committee call for submissions, the Therapeutic Goods Administration also held an open public submission on the regulation of nicotine for smoking cessation, advocating that nicotine for e-cigarettes be restricted to smoking cessation via a script from a smoker's general practitioner. Vapors in Australia have already made it very clear to the government that if they are denied access to nicotine e-liquid, they will have no choice but to seek it on the black market and or return to smoking combustible tobacco. One of the issues with the regulations proposed by the TGA is that there is a lack of general practitioners who will write the scripts for liquid nicotine for vaping, and these new regulations proposed do not compel GPs to provide this service to their patients. We will keep you informed with developments as they are notified. Aotearoa, New Zealand, the first country in the Asia-Pacific region to fully legalize electronic cigarettes nicotine e-liquid and heated tobacco products as consumer products. This was done to assist the country in reaching their smoke-free 2025 goal. Across the ditch in Aotearoa, New Zealand, there has been an election and vapors are waiting to see what will transpire now with regulations with the change in leadership at the Ministry of Health. The Honorable Andrew Little is the Minister of Health and Dr. Alicia Viral is the Associate Minister in charge of the Tobacco Control Portfolio. The legislation I'm about to introduce to the House will ban most flavours. That's what you said in September of last year. You haven't banned flavours, you've just restricted where those flavours can be sold. They inherit the legislation that Jenny Salesa, the former Associate Minister responsible for tobacco control, pushed through. Her version had minimal input from the vaping community and the independent industry. She rushed it through right before Parliament broke for the elections in October. We've been trying to get in front of them for a long time um, and just saying that we've effectively had enough. Vaping will more or less be treated the same way as smoking. Is that fair? Um, yes, uh, that would be kind of a, a way of, of expressing is yes. Vape shops will still be able to sell a wider range of flavours but in the bill places like dairies will be restricted to menthol, tobacco and mint. That's not going to help us give up because you've still got that taste of tobacco or menthol in it. I have vanilla right now. With the change of leadership, Avka, VTANS and supporters of tobacco harm reduction are hopeful that this will bring about more cooperation with the community and independent industry to develop the regulatory framework. The legislation had to balance the concerns about adult smokers who want to stop smoking cigarettes versus the risks to children. And I don't think we got the balance quite right. But it's progressive. It could be better. And the decision is a, a good start and the legislation can be improved, the regulations still have to be formulated, and there are options for uh, overcoming some of the limitations of the legislation. While the legislation is not perfect, there is room for improvement, and hopefully this will be done with the development of the regulatory framework, which will be open for public consultation in the new year. It's probably saved my life, and if we're worth anything to the government, then it's worth a step taking. Groups like Avka and VTANS are monitoring to see what the framework will look like. We will keep you posted on developments. And now for a quick look at what is happening in the wider Asia Pacific region. Kerajaan juga akan mengenakan duty excise pada kadar ad valorem 10% ke atas semua jenis peranti rokok elektronik dan bukan elektronik, termasuk vape. The Malaysian 2021 budget was announced last month and they will impose a 10% tax on devices and zero nicotine e-liquid as nicotine is still banned by law. Shortly thereafter, British American Tobacco also announced that they were entering the Malaysian e-cigarette market with their range of products. While others can argue that these announcements can be seen as steps towards regulation, Advocates in Malaysia failed to see the logic that was applied to taxing non-nicotine liquid and equipment. Meanwhile, in Taiwan, the government had been pushing to ban all novel tobacco products. 
However, there is now talk to legalize and regulate heated tobacco products, but to ban all flavored products such as e-cigarettes and nicotine e-liquid. Advocates there say that this is an issue of the complexity of the science behind nicotine e-liquid and vaping that would require an intensive education for officials, whereas heated tobacco products are simpler to understand and therefore regulate. Hong Kong is in a similar situation to Taiwan. Regulation of safer products had been brought before the Legislative Council previously, but had been sidelined with other issues that had arisen. In terms of uh, e-cigarette and also heat not burn cigarettes, first of all, uh, the government think it is harmful. Um, and uh, therefore, uh, we have to strengthen our re existing regulation on these uh, products. However, in November, it was notified that the regulations were going forward. The previous bill was being resurrected in committee and would include heated tobacco products, but not nicotine e-liquid, which would remain illegal. Submissions will be accepted from experts beginning in mid-December, with a decision to be made by February 2021. Thank you for joining us. Don't forget to get involved in your local consumer advocacy groups. Remember, it's your life that they are fighting for. Until we meet again, stay safe and be well.